Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of In the Spotlight. I'm Mike Kenichi. I'm very excited tonight because if you followed ADS TV like I did, this uh, individual on tonight, she was a big part of ADS TV. I mean, who could forget her in an, a couple episodes of Different Strokes as Arnold's pal Alice? Um, then, of course, years later, she would be on Growing Pains and she was Carol Seaver's best friend, um, Shelly. She's done a number of things. She's a tremendous person. It's my honor to introduce to you Miss Rachel Jacobs Stroops. And Rachel, I want to thank you for coming on today. It's a real honor. Of course. Thank you so much for asking. So, Rachel, being a young kid, I, I think you started doing your first, you know, where you got some guest spots in like 1977. But how did the love for acting begin for you? Oh, that's a great question. Um, honestly, I didn't really have uh, much of a choice. It's in my DNA. <laughs> but <laughs> parents were both uh, theater majors in college. That's how they met. Um, they were actually cast as uh, sibling, Von Trapp siblings in The Sound of Music in their production in college. And um, gosh, my both my uh, both my grandfathers on both sides were actors in college. And so um, really, it was, you know, kind of like go. My, my parents said that I was uh, I was six weeks old when I appeared in my my dad's production of he directed a, a production of Carousel, and yeah. that was my debut. So it it just kind of went from there. It's you know acting for a child I think is kind of it can be real natural. You just kind of you know pre pretend. You just kind of have to do it over and over again at, on, on a certain spot. <laughs> so right. and I think Rachel, um, you were probably like five or six years old when um, you started getting. Uh, work with acting, but did you take any acting classes? I mean, did you do any of that before you, you know, just went all in? You're so sweet. Um, no, I, I didn't really take a formal acting class until I was in my teens. And even then it was just kind of an improv thing just to make sure I, you know, I actually had some talent you know, at that age. You're kind of questioning, like, was I just lucky? You know, um, that transition from child actor to teen is always rough. Uh, but it was mostly mostly my parents, mostly my mom being my my coach. Um, yeah, a first I did a I think I did a commercial when I was five, like my first commercial. Um, I think it was Utah Power and Light. I had to open up a an oven to watch the cupcakes bake. Yeah, and, uh, and I remember counting how many times we had to do it. <laughs> um, and then uh, people said, you know, your kids are your kids are really cute and. Uh, and you should, you should try Hollywood. We were living in Utah at the time. And, um, uh, my parents were like, Hmm, maybe. And honestly, we, we were so broke. <laughs> my mom was like, you know, I, she's her famous quote is I could make everything but shoes for my children. And, um, I, they were just, she was just tired of being broke. So she thought if there's a chance that we can, you know, do something. And, and with that, um, uh, they also, always wanted to like, sh it was more like a sharing of, of talent and skill to uplift and, and help other people feel happy than it was more like a, a showing off kind of thing. So that was kind of where my parents were coming from. Like, Hey, you know, Rachel could sing for this, you know, she could help you fill a spot if you need somebody to sing or tap dance or whatever. And that's kind of where they're coming from. But uh, ultimately it was, you know, financial, I think just go. So. Yeah. And you know, Rachel, it's funny because nowadays there's so many streaming networks, Hulu, Netflix, uh, Prime, you name it, there's a streaming network. But what people forget when you were first starting out acting, there wasn't even cable boxes yet. It was just channels like one to 13. Yeah. So, I mean, the fact that you were able to get work back then, it's really remarkable because it wasn't easy because there weren't that many shows. But the seventies really, in my opinion, was when the sitcoms really took off because you had so many sitcoms. You had Alice, All in the Family, um, Happy Days. I mean, so many had just come onto the scene. So you kind of like really grew, you know, as a young child, grew up at a time where TV was really starting to explode. Yeah, yeah. People forget that we really had three networks, you know. And um, I guess I remember going to my best friend's house at in high school and they had cable on and I was like, what is this? Cause we didn't have it in my house. Wait, what MTV? What? Um, but yeah, three networks and you know, your public access and that was about it. Um, it was kind of a, a real sweet spot for the, the three camera sitcom at the time for sure. Right. 
Now, like, um, I want to say, Rachel, the first, like, thing I really remember you in was something, it was called something like, um, who would love the children or who would love my oh, children? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So talk about that. Cause I think that was what, 77 or 78 around that time. Well, I, I know you were young. Yeah. yeah, I was. I'm trying to think if I was in middle school yet or not. It was definitely awkward. Like I look back and I'm like, Oh, awkward face. Um, I was really lucky to get that because I'm not a dramatic actress. Um, especially at the time, uh, it was uh, an ABC Circle film, I think, a, kind of like a, a movie of the week. Yeah. Um, uh, with Anne Margaret and Frederick Forrest. And it was based on a true story of a woman. I can't remember her name now uh, off the top of my head, but she was, uh, you know, kind of back in the, I want to say maybe 30s, 40s, uh, diagnosed with cancer and decided that she was going to find homes for her children before she inevitably passed, which is kind of like, heartbreaking right so i was cast as one of the 10 children and the cast was hilarious and so much fun um but like in the scenes where we had to like you know hug mom and say goodbye it was rough because i was not i was not like a a crier as opposed to um uh tracy gold who was uh, cast as one of my sisters awesome dramatic actress um yeah. who else there was soleil moon fry who was punky brewster um there was um, Hallie, the oldest sister, she went on to be, um, I think I want to say Lizzie McGuire's mom. So we had a lot of, uh, a lot of amazing, amazing people. Uh, Bumper Yothers, I think, uh, Tina Yothers, um, brother, uh, Tina was, uh, the youngest sister in Family Ties. Right. Um, yeah. And I'm just kind of going off like the mental image in my head of like our, one of our, uh, promo, uh, pictures we had to do. But yeah, I was really lucky to be a part of that. That was kind of wild. Um, I remember my, my I'm the oldest of five. And so I remember my mom going, wow, they're casting 10 kids. Let's dress you guys all up like you're like poor, you know, uh, poor farming kids. Uh, we all had overalls on. I think we got some of the neighbor kids and some of the kids we went to church with. And we all like, basically, mom were like, okay, let's do it. Then she took a picture. Yeah, I still have that somewhere. <laughs> and, yeah. Um, and I was the one that ended up getting cast. I, I don't know why, because honestly, I don't think I look like any of them, but <laughs> it was a wonderful experience. Right. And, you know, one thing, too, um, I'm sure it's it's done in TV, but one thing when you're doing a movie, it's not about just, like, doing the scenes they give you. There's so many things that go into it. You have to have, like, a, you know, somebody who teaches you, you know, how to ad lib and things like that. So there's a lot that goes into when you're making a movie because you have these different, you have the stage coach, you know, all these different type of people that are going over things with you. So, I mean, there's a lot that goes into making a movie that I think sometimes people don't realize. I, I love that you brought that up because one of my over um, overarching memories from Who Will Love My Children was, um, and I don't know if she was, I don't know her professional title, if she was like a, a dialogue coach or just like, um, I, but she was amazing and they had us keep journals. Um, so I have a couple of those journals still as a kid, but she really wanted us to, um, it was almost like team building activities. She really wanted the children to, uh, feel like a family. So at one point she had us, um, and I, I think this is in the movie as well, um, have an apple. And we all took a bite of it and we shared it. We went around. And, you know, at first you're like, ew, <laughs> right? Like, oh. but it was, um, that was the first time I, I had experienced anything like that. Because with the three camera sitcom, you know, you go, you do your lines and um, you have your studio teacher. But it was, it was, they really tried super hard to get um, the children to feel like a family. And I, I do remember um, Anne Margaret, uh, she, kind of isolated herself from the children's parents. She didn't want, I, I think, I think I could be wrong, but I think she wanted us to like look to her more maternally than, um, than that she, she was some you know big movie star. I do remember she was in this calico print gown, not even a gown, like a, like an apron almost, like a total farmer's wife, total farmer's wife. And then she had her gigantic big fur, like it was like a fox fur over because she was cold in the, in the sound studio. I thought that was so awesome because she looked all, you know, no makeup, hair back, looking really sick, like she's got cancer in this in this uh, flower sack 
print gown with her big fur in between takes. I love that. But yeah, that was the first time that we had um, really uh, like like cast team bonding exercises that we did like every day. And um, I can't remember the name of the lady, but I'm so grateful to her because it really worked. It really made some really good memories for me and helped me understand, like really for the, for all intents and purposes, that was like my first kind of acting uh, coaching. And I really appreciate that. So. Yeah. And you know, um, Rachel, we'll, we're going to get to different strokes, but a movie you did and you didn't have a big part in it, but you had an important part. You were here in a movie with Gary called the boy with the broken halo. Yeah. And I think you played Marta. If I remember correctly. <laughs> I don't even yeah. remember. <laughs> yeah. And, um, Again, I mean, look at the cast of characters in that. You had John Plachette, who was a successful actor. You had uh, Robert, um, the guy from Benson. His last mm -hmm. name escapes me. Gulam or uh, uh, Guillaume, maybe? Robert yeah. Guillaume? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. and, I mean, of course, you had Gary. And I think Tammy That's Lauren, right. Tammy Lauren, who's been a successful actress over the years, she was in that movie. She played the daughter in there. So, I mean, that was a an important movie to have because at the time Gary Coleman was on fire as far as his career went. So if you were able to be in a movie with him, you know that that's a big deal. Yeah. And I think, I think I remember correctly. Was that directed by Rob Reiner? Maybe. I believe so, yeah. Rob Reiner, right. And then, and then was my brother, I think Tammy Lauren and Keith Coogan were siblings. Yes. Yep. yep. I have a picture my dad took of us. It's Tammy and Keith and me with my arm around Corey Feldman and yes. he played my brother. So um, I, my dad was always taking pictures. I was kind of embarrassed, you know, like, oh dad, but I'm so glad we have them because, uh, you know, years later I, we connect and I see Keith at something and I go, look, look at it, think that's us. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that was, that was a really fun experience. That was, I, you did your homework, oh my gosh. Yeah, and that, and that movie was really fun because back then, uh, you know, producers, directors, they were smart. They knew that you have to cater to the kids as well, not just the adults. And they knew movies like that were going to bring in a lot of kids because again, a lot of people watched Gary Coleman during the week, you know, on different strokes. So they knew that if they had a lot of kids in that movie, people, kid, young kids were going to watch because again, kids want to watch, you know, stuff that they relate to stuff they're going on so i always thought that was very you know ingenious by a lot mm -hmm. of the uh writers and stuff right yeah yeah i agree i i totally agree right so let me ask you um rachel how do you you know different strokes obviously you did two episodes but in shows you've guest starred in i mean did you have to audition for all of them i mean how did that how does it happen when you're doing a guest spot i mean because you, you might be on one episode of something. So how does that work for an actress? Right. Um, I remember, yeah, auditioning for different strokes. And I think, I want to say when I did Family Ties, it was uh, the controversial subject of like book banning. Yeah. And it wasn't initially slotted to be a, a two-parter, but it like, the writers like kept... Anyway, it turned into a two-parter. So that was right. that was that. So I obviously didn't have to audition for the, the second part, but I was surprised that they even brought me back anyway, because I didn't need to, because I was just like a, a kid in the classroom. But uh yeah, I I remember auditioning for different strokes. Um I I wanna say maybe the love vote. I don't know yeah. if I did I can't remember did, something I, like that. I, I think you did two episodes of the I love think vote. I, did. I remember, yeah. Two or three at least. I think it was something like Again, we weren't really slotted to, um, but they kind of liked the dynamic of the family and Charo was the nanny. And um, there was even talk um, at the time that they were thinking about doing a spinoff. So Larry Linville as the, like, uh, was he the sportscaster dad and Charo was yeah. the, the spicy nanny. Um, and then us as the troublemaking, like bad seed kind of kids. But um, I, all I remember is if... Somebody saying, and maybe this is inaccurate because how old was I? Like eight or something. But um, if our production schedule had been like a week earlier or a week later, we actually would have been able to be on the boat. Yeah. <laughs> and we would have filmed on the boat. And I know still to this day, I've never been on a cruise. But like, um, but yeah, I remember going, oh, God. Oh. So, you know, the things that, you know, make an eight year old frustrated. <laughs> but being on the love boat, let's talk about that a little bit because. Sure. 
that show was based on guest stars. Many famous TV stars, guest starred on that show. You know, they got to play different parts. So if you're being asked to be on a couple episodes of The Love Boat, you know at this point that people see that um, you're a good actress, that you're doing something because, you know, it's not – they had the best of the best on that show. So if you got to be on one or two episodes, you know that you're really – even though you were a young kid, you could realize that you're really making it. Oh, yeah. I I remember um, where we lived at the time. Love Boat came on a little too late for my parents to let us stay up to watch it. So I didn't really – but, you know, I mean, the opening – opening theme song and you know the whole the graphics like that was super oh how exciting um but yeah i i didn't really get it at the time um and now even now i'm thinking gosh because my brother was also on an episode and that's so i can't really remember who else was on the episode with me like the different storylines but i know there was like um uh marcia brady and um richard hatch and uh Dirk Benedict, and they were really doing big in, um, yeah. gosh, what was uh, Balsar Galactica at the time. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it was kind of the thing, like, I think they they did that on purpose. Like, they're taking uh, actors who are kind of hot at the moment and, like, giving them spots to, you know, help them. And, like, I think that's great. Why not? Sure. Right. So let me ask you this, Rachel. Um, before, like, we're going to talk about different strokes, but one of the things I really loved about shows like Different Strokes, uh, Silver Spoons, which you were on an episode of that, uh, Growing Pains, uh, Hogan's Family, whatever the case may be, there was comedy, but there was also serious moments. And right now in 2024, no comedies really have that anymore. And I think that's unfortunate because I always liked that there was a balance there. There was laughter, but there was also some tough issues they tackled. And now it just seems like TV has went where they're just, it's jokes the entire episode. And I really don't like that. I always felt like the way they did it back in the seventies, eighties and early nineties was the right way to do it. I I appreciate that. Yeah. I, um, cause you need, you need to balance, right. It needs to, it needs to feel like, um, it's not just fluff or whatever. I know. Um, I remember thinking boy meets world. Yeah. did Did a, kind of good job of tackling harder stuff. Uh, even it, from what I've seen, I love uh, young Sheldon. They can kind of, yeah, you know, <laughs> touch on the <clears throat> family dynamic and um, the craziness. But yeah, I agree. It's, it's, it's nice to have that balance instead of, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm an older mom now. So my, my kids aren't watching any of the, um, like the Disney channel shows, but they're just so for, for the kids they are just so silly. Like, like you guys, like just yeah. joke after joke after joke. And my kids loved it, but I'm like, oh, I had to be in another room. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> right. So let me ask you, Rachel, when uh, the two part episode, you were on different strokes, you were what at the time, nine or 10 years old? I mean, you were young. Gosh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And what, it, what I really found remarkable about you, and this is why you are such a gifted actress. You played that part so well. And that was a real tough episode because it was tackling something that, you know, has unfortunately been around for too long. And it was, you know, you had to play a character whose father was a bigot. He was a racist, you know, and you played it so well. But just how as a young kid, did you when you saw the script and this is what you were going to play? Did you really understand just how important back then you know, what was going on at that time? No, not really. Um, not really. My, my parents did a great job of, you know, raising us, uh, to be pretty, uh, skin color blind. So the fact that, that my dad wouldn't let me share a, a hospital room with this little boy was like, I don't get it. But okay, here we go. You know, yeah. um, and Dabney Coleman was amazing. And later seeing him in like, all the stuff he did like nine to five and yeah. it was so much fun. Um, yeah, I didn't really, it didn't really register, but when, um, they had that little scene of, uh, of Arnold talking about the blue nurse and the purple nurse. And the, do you remember that whole little, Oh thing? yeah. Yeah. That was did the, yeah. Um, I just thought it was hilarious. I was like, yeah, right. Like just, right. We're just friends. Yeah. We're just friends. It's- And, you know, it's funny um, you brought up Dabney and that's not an back then. That wasn't an easy part to play, because a lot of times 
it, it's unfortunate, but uh, fans tend to think that what you play on TV is who you are in real life. So mm-hmm. playing a tough character like that, where he's a racist, it's really like tricky because you could just be walking to the grocery store and people will just start saying stuff to you. Right. They don't realize that you're really just playing a character. You know, this isn't who you really <laughs> are. And I got, you know, you give him a lot of credit because he did make you hate his character on that. Oh, show, you know? So good. But- yeah, if you take a risk, I guess, with your career playing a playing a bad, you know, an unlikable bad guy, then are you yeah. going to be typecast and be that from from then on out? I mean, obviously, nine to five, he was like, he did such a great job. He loved to hate him. He was horrible, but yeah, um, yeah uh, and, and I hear you hear about that like soap opera uh, stars too, you know, where they're on. You know, they, their image is coming into, you know, somebody's house every single day. And then they go out in public and people are like, oh, how dare you? Whatever. Like, I'm just I'm acting. Yeah, because it's funny. Um, You know, I had Matt Servito on. He played uh, AJ Harris on The Sopranos. And oh, yeah. He was telling me that uh, when he would be out and about and they were like shooting the new season, he'd be out with his wife or whatever. Some people would go up to him and say, you better leave Tony Soprano alone. And he's just playing a part. But he said that people like they get so into a show Mm -hmm. that they sometimes forget that it's not reality. Mm -hmm. You know, they, you know, kind of drift away from that a little bit. And it's easy to do um, in print, too. I remember my mom telling me a story. I'm trying to, like, get her to, like, write this all down because I think. Um, for just our, you know, personal family history's sake, these are really, really interesting. Um, my mom said uh, one of the ladies, maybe at church or something, came up to her and said, "Oh, I can't believe, you know, Rachel's bedroom is so beautiful." And I had done a print ad for like mop and glue or something. Uh, I was just a kid in a bedroom, <laughs> but in the magazine, um, it was this, and I. My mom, my where's my mom her hair because she could tell it better. I guess I was I was just a kid, but the lady is standing there with her mop in this shiny, shiny floor. And when my mom watched them do it because she was on set, they literally like had polyurethane the floor. No one was allowed to touch it or stand on it, and they like put this actress down in the middle of the floor on a crane so she would not leave any footprints. And there she is. It's supposed to be like my bedroom or something, or you know, yeah. something like that. Um, and my mom was like, "That's that's." That's not my house. That's not my real floor. That, that's not that's not Rachel's bedroom. Um, that was a set. And so this was before, you know, I, Photoshopping and any kind of stuff like that made it so easily to tamper with images. But yeah, it's real easy for people to see something and not know the Hollywood magic behind it. Right, exactly. And Rachel, that episode of Different Strokes was an important episode. Uh throughout the eight year run of that series. I mean, that really was like an episode where, you know, they, they told a great story because unfortunately this does happen, but what was just great was how your character, Alice, she just liked everybody. And I mean, she was so positive, so full of energy. And I always felt like you and Gary had great chemistry for those two episodes. I mean, the two of you were hysterical, you know, when they run away, I always laugh when I think of how, two little kids were able to run away from the hospital and get back to, you know, Arnold's penthouse. But I mean, you were so good in that episode. I used to love when like you would talk to Penelope and then Gary would go talk to her and you would say, she's not there anymore. You know, so I mean, how much fun was it to work on that show (laughs) and work with Gary? Oh, I'm so glad you asked because I got some great stories about that. Um, So I remember we did a lot of rehearsing in a, like a, a rehearsal hall, like not on the set, just to like kind of hammer out the blocking and um, yeah. and firm down like the dialogue and what was working. And and at one point I was wearing sandals and I don't know why, but I had taken them off and uh, Gary like took them. He, he like hid them or something. And I went to Todd and I said, help. His uh, Todd Bridges' mom actually worked for my agent at the time, who was uh, Mary Grady. And yeah. so I kind of looked at him like, ah, you know, like, hey, what? I can't. But I th- he took he took my shoes. So when he chased me, it would be harder for me to run away because he chased me into the girl's bathroom. And I don't know if he like looking back, I don't know if he was just like messing with me, um, trying to make me feel like 
you know, like a hazing thing, like, welcome to the show. This is how, this is what we do to, or like, if he had a crush on me or I don't know, but I remember Todd going, dude, leave her alone. Like she's too young for you anyway. <laughs> like he literally said, no, God, leave her alone. Um, but it kind of was like, you know, he kind of, kind of scared me a little bit. Uh, my mom remembers we, uh, Gary's dad and Gary and me and my mom went to lunch one time. We went to a, a fast food place and she thought it was the first time that she overheard like the parents having a conversation that was like pretty serious uh, Hollywood business stuff, like yeah. how to play your cards right. Because she was still very new and very um, uh, naive about, you know, what it takes to, you know, get your kid at the top of the, uh, the class there. Um, and the kind of money and kind of the power. She said it was a little frightening. Um, at one point, I remember we were in, I think we were rehearsing in that cabinet. Remember, they finally find yes. us at the yes. end. And he, I don't know if he was coming in for a kiss, but he was getting uncomfortably close while we were like, so we're in there and we're waiting for them to do, you know, to, we're waiting for our big reveal. We're waiting for the other actors to finish their lines. And and I was like, cause he was coming, he was coming at me. <laughs> and I think I, I ducked under him, under his legs or something and, and tried to run away. But, um, but, but it, you know, it wasn't like, uh, I mean, I could never say like sexual harassment or anything like that. It was just kids playing. It was just, we were just playing. Um, but yeah, he did have me a little like, oh, keep it, keeping me on my toes. <laughs> yeah. And you know, the thing about that episode too, like, um, I'm thinking as a fan watching it at the time, and I'm a young kid, but I'm watching it. And when Dabney's character says, you know, if we find Alice, you know, her and Arnold could share the room together at the hospital. And you're thinking, okay, he realizes that he was wrong and he caused them to run away. But then you, you don't get a happy ending at the end with him because he says something to the effect, like, to, you know, Mr. Drummond, he says, you know, next time I, have feelings about something i'm just not going to say anything or he said something that was still kind right. of racist. and and you know i just thought that they told a good story that they this is what real life is unfortunately and even though he allowed them to be in the room because they had run away and stuff his feelings about you know uh mm -hmm. you know race and stuff hadn't changed he still was a bigot and it was unfortunate but like it was a great story they told at the same time yeah I think they did, uh, they did a great job. And it was like my first experience, like uh, understanding that there are people out there who feel that way. Like, oh, okay. I remember Dana Plato had a horrible cold and every time they tried, she and um, Charlotte Ray did, oh, uh, yeah. did yeah, uh, yeah. Is that right? Uh, did their little puppet show. They were like, wah, wah, wah. She yeah. was so contested and she just felt miserable. Um, but she was a trooper. And so that kind of was a good uh, example for me to like how to be professional. And I was, I had a little uh, latch hook rug kit that I was doing it in between takes and, and downtime during rehearsal when it wasn't my scene. And she was like, what is that? And I'm like, Oh, I think it was a, I've never finished it. It's a, it's a bunch of little kitties in a basket. And I was taking yarn and making this little thing. And she was, she was so interested that Dana went out and she got one too. And we were like sitting there, trying to hook together and I was trying to teach her how to do it. <laughs> but um, that was, that was a long time ago. <laughs> right. funny. Those you know, the things you remember. And it's crazy too, Rachel, because as fans, sometimes, you know, we kind of remember you as that young, you know, as a young kid, I, I remember the character Alice, but then we're going to get to growing pains in a sec, but fast forward to 1988 or 87, I think it was 87 you're doing this part on family ties and it's a similar type of thing. It's, you know, the character Jennifer Keaton, she really believes that she should be able to do a book report on Huckleberry Finn. And I remember, you know, like you said, you didn't have a lot of lines in that, but what you did have was, you know, <laughs> less is more sometimes. And, you know, you said, you know, a person who will remain nameless, Jennifer Keaton. And I just thought like that was a great episode. And I thought all the, <laughs> the actors, the guest actors, they all did a great job in that two part episode. Thank you. Yeah. Well, you know, obviously like uh, we are really merely just a, a a vessel for the writers. The writers are 
so under uh, acknowledged. Um, we just kind of interpret what we what we think. I, I remember being super starstruck with with uh, Michael J. Fox because that was like the peak of his. Uh, I don't know if Back to the Future had come out yet, but it was close. He was doing all those Pepsi commercials. And uh, and everything I always heard about him, Rachel, is he was the nicest guy in the world. Like, there was no <laughs> ounce of mean in this guy whatsoever. And he was a very humble. He was nothing like his character, Alex Keaton. Yeah, that was the first time that I could say that I was starstruck. Like, I was speechless. Like, I couldn't. Uh, like, you know, I've worked with Ricky Schroeder and like some big names up to this point. And, it, you know, we're all just kind of, we're just working actors, whatever. But Michael J. Fox, I was just, I, I, I still, I'm just amazed that he could be joking around with the extras and da, 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 da. And, and the, the cameraman will go, and five, four, three, two. And then he'll turn, you know, he'll do his thing. And it was like seamless and time and time again and these hard lines and you know the rest of us are struggling with just a few words to say and he's i remember i was wearing a shirt i do remember um you might be too young but uh, frankie goes to hollywood went through yeah. this phase where they had these big like white t-shirts with big black letters even like wham and uh it was kind of the thing to have big block letters on your clothes yeah that said like uh i don't remember like wham or whatever but mine said drug free body and you know, com coming up pretty, pretty Christian and pretty, uh, pretty straight laced. I I wanted to like go, oh, yeah, I you know I don't do any of that stuff. And um, when you're wearing clothes, you forget what you sometimes you know what you're putting out there, what people are reading. And uh, Michael came up to me and said, "So not even Tylenol?" <laughs> I had no idea what he was saying. I didn't know what he was saying. I don't know what he meant. And I was like, "What?" Because, you know, I'm, oh, oh, later. <laughs> yeah. He said it again, not even Tylenol? Yeah. And I was like, no, no. So, yeah. Not even Tylenol. And then I looked at him and I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> That's what he was referring to. But, um, right. yeah, I was, I may have, I may have followed him home once in my car as we, we were both coming out a lot at the same time. And I, I, I followed him as far as I could go before I really had to get off the freeway. And, and yeah. I may have, uh. I may have taken one of his Pepsi cans that touched his lips that he put down to throw in. I just, I just loved him. I just, I'm happy to not. He was amazing. Right. And I mean, you know, th those are experiences too, though, Rachel, like when you look back and now, you know, you're a mother and you've had like a career that started in the early, you know, late middle seventies and carried on into the early nineties. So, I mean, you got these great experiences of people you were able to work with. So, I mean, that part of it in the acting sense had to be rewarding because you worked with so many talented people. Yeah, I, I, I used to tell people now, now we're, we're no longer relevant. <laughs> now people don't know. But, you know, years ago, I would say between, um, I'm the oldest of five siblings and we all um, were acting. Uh, I said between the, the five of us, you could play like the six degrees of Kevin Bacon you know, only with like, okay, name, name somebody in Hollywood in the eighties. And there's a good chance that within six degrees, like one of us, like worked with somebody who worked with them who worked, um, because, uh, it was such a, it was such a tight knit. It was really tight knit community at the time. Now there's so much available, like even, even for my grandkids, like we could stream, you know, PBS, we can, there's Disney Plus. There's like so many choices. It, we were trying to watch a Bluey episode the other night, and my my grandson goes, "No, no, Mimi, I want to watch the one with the blah blah blah." And I'm like, oh, I, I don't even know if I can find that one. <laughs> so and you know choices. what? You know what's crazy, Rachel, is Pluto TV. It's another uh, mm -hmm. streaming network, and they show Family Ties 24 hours, and they go <laughs> they go through every season. So. You're on Pluto TV at least oh once a week or twice a week, actually, because they go through the seven seasons, you know, twice in one week. So, I mean, you're always on somewhere every week. And that has to be a good feeling as well. That's so crazy. My neighbor across the street, um, he loves his favorite Disney movie is Fox and the Hound. And I was able to get him Keith's autograph. But anyway, it was Keith was amazing. When I saw him at a Comic-Con here at Denver. And so I gave him a little autograph. Hey, this is it. He was like, oh, my gosh. But yeah, he's always wearing vintage T-shirts. And he said that once. He goes, yeah, I saw you or on something. And it must have been Pluto that he was watching. But um, I used to work with the uh, the young women, like the, the teenage girls in, in our church group. 
And some of the leaders are like, hey, did you know that you could see, you know, you could, they call me Sister Sister Struce. You know, Sister Struce, when she was a teenager, she was on blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, you guys, stop. <laughs> stop. But yeah, um, I, I did get, I think my husband one year for Christmas got me the Growing Pains, uh, like the box set. Yeah. The, the seasons that I was on just for fun. I think they're still in their plastic because like... <laughs> My older kids have seen some of those, but I don't, I think my younger kids haven't seen those. So, right. And you know, a couple other series that you did one that didn't really last long and I wish it would have, cause I was really enjoying it. You did the TV TV version of uncle buck. And I think you were on five or six episodes. I believe you you played Lucy, if I'm not mistaken. I, I think you're right. I yeah. Gosh, and, I yeah. And I remember that, like, I was disappointed that it didn't, uh, get picked up for more episodes because I thought it was really cool. But, you know, sometimes you realize that's just TV. But I mean, how did you enjoy doing that? Did you like it? Oh, yeah, it was so much fun. Um, I, I, I made peace with my, uh, my ability to get cast as like the friend. Like, yeah. I, I was always kind of like the friend and never yeah. really the lead. Um, by that time, I was like, you know, I'm glad I'm grateful to be working like whatever. It's all good. And the um, the writers um, were great friends. Um, and uh, I remember one time we had to they aged us. It was for a dream sequence. Um, these are like the big you know, moments in my head that are still in my scrapbook. And so we had to go through um, hours of like prosthetics and wrinkles to to make us old. Yeah. And, um they gave me like this peach polyester suit and <laughs> yes. these white yeah. sandals and, and a wig. And I looked just like my grandma, like just like my grandma. Um, and I remember my, my parents coming for, I think it was my mom. It was just my mom coming to see the taping of that episode. And uh, and I walked right after, oh, hello, Becky. Because again, they, they had to have some uh, some dialogue coaches like, helping us, we walked around the set and like, okay, so you're, you know, you've had hip surgery. How would you walk? You, you know, kind of all these like acting techniques. And um, I, I, I was good friends with the daughter of one of the writers. Yeah. And so we, I knew the writer's mother, oh, <laughs> grandma, <laughs> grandma Marge, um, may she rest in peace. And, uh, and the daughter said, you should talk like my grandma because she's really distinct and and so I kind of adopted this little, oh, hello, how are you doing? And, and Tim goes, oh, thanks. You know, nice impression of my mom there you're doing. But anyway, I walked up to my mom and I said, oh, hello, Becky, how are you doing? Talking yeah. like Grandma Marge. And she did not recognize me. And um, that was really fun. Because I, I thought the first time that I could really like uh, identify with, you know, what you hear, maybe what Jim Carrey had to go through sitting in the, the makeup chair, like to get his stuff on for the, you know, when he did the Grinch or, cause I had never really had to do that, but it was, it was wild. That was really fun. Yeah. And I, I, like I said, I really wish they uh, would have kept it going, but you know, I mean, on, you know, in TV that nothing's guaranteed. Mm -hmm. but, um, and then there was another show you did. And I think like you did maybe, I want to say nine or 10 episodes was a, a show by the name of it's not easy. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. my gosh. That's super old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, that was another good show. I mean, like, I always say this, that sometimes the shows that lasted a year or two were some of the best shows I liked. And I, I think a lot a lot of times what happens is they just get put on terrible time slots or, yeah. you know, terrible nights. But you did a great job in that. And um, talk about that a little bit because, I mean, you were phenomenal in that. Oh, thank you. Um, gosh, well, what I remember from that is... Honestly, one of the promo pictures, I thought I was being really cute. And I'm like this. And they kept trying to get me to smile. And to this day, I'm like, what was I doing? Was I trying to be all like, mm, right? <laughs> I should have just smiled. But anyway, oh, and I had a really bad perm the second season. But anyway, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I remember they had to, we, we shot the pilot. It was with um, Ken Howard, who was just coming off the white shadow, I think. Right. Mm -hmm. And Jane Meadows, amazing, amazing, um, yeah. who played the grandma. And I can't remember the name of the, of the, who would have been like my stepdad, I guess, um, from the first, from the pilot, but he had passed away in a tragic accident. So by the I time we got to shooting, they had to recast. I think it was, I want to say Burt Convy, maybe. <laughs> they might have, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that was kind of, that kind of rattled. I remember showing up for work and kind of feeling like everybody was like, 
are we, you know, are we still going to be, be able to pull this off and be funny? Um, yeah, that was, that was wild. We had my, my, uh, our theory is that it was really hard to make divorce super funny at the time <laughs> because yeah. it was, you know, divorced parents who are trying to share custody and the kids go back and forth. Yeah. I don't really remember too much about filming. Um, it was a good show though. I mean, it really was like, um, and the title was great and it really yeah. did show like, for me anyway, young kids that like what does happen when divorce is going yeah. on, how, you know, it affects the child. So, I mean, I thought they told a great story as well. I'm glad. Thank you. Yeah. I don't even, uh, I, I fond memories of, of, of Jane Menno's writing me little notes kind of as a surrogate grandma there. Cause mine, I lived out of state. Um, uh, fond memories of working with, uh, Billy Jacoby as my brother. Yeah. Or I guess stepbrother, because we had worked in the past, um, young, uh, younger kids on um, a, a, another short lived show called um, Maggie. It was yes. uh, Irma Bombex. Yeah. And so my, my brother played Billy's brother. And I did a, uh, did I appear twice or two episodes of that? I think which maybe three. Yeah. Kind of a crazy, yeah. Kind of. Yeah. So I loved working with Billy. He was amazing. Um, we're still friends on Facebook. I don't really post, but. I get to see what he's doing. He's directing and stuff, but, um, but yeah, good times. Just, just working. Yeah. Just. And you know, um, now we get to where this was my favorite, uh, character you ever did. And that was Shelly <laughs> on Growing Pains. <laughs> Funny about Shelly, Rachel. My hair. <laughs> Shelly and Debbie, they were pretty much Carol's friends, but they didn't always give her the best advice. Like a lot of times, they caused Carol to do things she didn't really want to do, but um, they were so entertaining. And I always think of that one episode where they're giving Carol a hard time because she wants to dance with some kid who, you know, they refer to as a complete goof. And really? then um, she, I think she ends up dancing with like Boner. Yes. And at, the, at the end of the episode, as they're getting ready to end the episode, Shelly and Debbie have nobody to dance with and they're da dancing with each other. And it was just so funny. I mean, <laughs> your character really <laughs> was. That was one of the fun, like she wasn't a character you hated. She was just a character that like, she would make you laugh throughout the episode. She had like some of the funniest moments on there. They gave us lots of good things to say. They gave us good lines. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was fun. I think I did. I think about 13 or 14. I want to say something like that. Yeah. yeah. Episodes over the, over a couple years. Um, and then. And then with like Chrissy being born and then like yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio came on. I was, I, I was, a, I was a freshman in college. So, I mean, luckily they didn't call me back down. Um, but, but it, you know, it would have been fun. Yeah. No, uh, Shelly and Debbie weren't, weren't really great. They, we were just, just horrible. <laughs> and you know, another episode too, that I really loved Rachel was uh, when Carol's running, I believe for student body president and there's like four other nominees, I think, or maybe it was homecoming queen, something like that. And she's running for it. And then all of them decide they want to back out. Now, you and your character and uh, the Debbie character, they're helping her, like, prepare for this. And no sooner did they, when they decided to back out, Deb, Debbie and um, Shelly run at the chance to put their names into the hat. So, I mean, it was just always <laughs> funny with those two characters. I mean, because they were, they were Carol's best friends. But like I said, I mean... Sometimes they had agendas for their own being, which oh, always yeah. made me laugh. <laughs> oh yeah, we we were kind of like the we were kind of like the Cinderella's wicked stepsisters. We were just yeah. I think we were kind of like the obnoxious comic. I don't know. We were we were a mess. But yeah, that that uh, dance fever episode was super fun. When I when I met my husband, he actually said that he and his brother used to quote that all the time. Um, when when they had when they when they saw it, but um. Yeah, that was some long filming, those some of those scenes. And we did the one when we did Our Town. I remember my wig was all powdery yeah, and was, white. And yeah. And we did I had to we had to do like Angel and Devil on her shoulders, like Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tracy and there, was a good then, sport. Yeah. And then there was the episode um where uh Carol decides that all three of you should start making new friends because it's a new year, new you know, yeah things and like uh Shelly and uh mainly Shelly says, no, there's a, there's a friendship code that we got to keep or something like that. So 
it was kind of weird. Because, I remember. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of weird to me because a lot of times you would think that would be something Shelly would say, we need to make new friends, but it was really Carol. So for one episode, at least, Carol's kind of not being such the great friend, but Shelly is. So it was interesting to see like um, them try that out. That was pretty cool as well. Nice. Yeah, I I was super grateful. Now, that was one. Um, the, the writers who had done um, WKRP in Cincinnati yeah. um, had worked on, they had worked on, was it, it must have been Maggie. No, it was Gloria. So my brother did a show with Sally Struthers. It was kind of a spinoff of um, uh, All in the Family. All in the Family. Thank I you. I think yeah. it was called Sally. Yep. Yeah, something like that. Uh, Burgess Meredith was in Gloria? it. Yeah. Gloria, yeah. yeah. That was her character with Burgess Meredith. Yeah, yeah. And my brother uh, played her, uh, Joey, Joey Stivic. Joey, yeah. Little Joey. So I would show up for tapings with my brother, and um, these other girls would show up about my same age. And it turns out that their dad was one of the writers. Anyway, we got to be really good friends. And w so when they went on, so when the dad went on to go do um, Growing Pains, he kind of like asked for me to kind of come in on an audition. That I think was one of the only times where I really, well, that's not true. They asked me to come in for 90210 as well. Um, I think I might've been a little too young and looking back, it was good that I, I didn't. My audition was horrible, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I've been friends with those guys for a long time, but it was one of the only times that I, I feel like they kind of uh, maybe Taylor made it for me. I uh, have a good reputation of playing the, like the bad seed kids like in Love Boat and, um, oh, and uh, one of the early, earliest things I did was Super Train with uh, yeah. with Keith Coogan, he played my brother. Yeah, we were like horrible. We're like horrible kids. So I um, so that was kind of fun to feel like that was uh, still part of me, <laughs> part of yeah. my personality. But the thing is, Rachel, is I always felt like the Shelly character, she was liked by the viewers. It was just that she uh -huh. was, she was going to play that, you know, everybody like, you know, Full House, they had Kim what was her name? Kimmy Gibbler. She was, oh, kind yeah, of, yeah. you know, they yeah. mean their intentions are, they mean well with their intentions, but they just go about it the wrong way. But she was always kind of deep down a good friend, just a friend who didn't give great advice, but I really enjoyed it when you were on that show. And that was another show that touched on a lot of serious issues. I think of the episode that Matthew Perry was in and oh, yeah. he played uh, Carol's boyfriend and yeah. got in a car accident and she thought he was going to be okay. And then that was the first time <laughs> I could ever remember Kirk Cameron's character, Mike, being so serious when he asked yeah. to bring news to her that he died. But they just did such a great job so many times in that show. And again, there was so much laughter in there, but there were definitely those serious moments and that's what, like, I felt made that show so successful. Yeah, I, I agree. I think they did a really great job of handling, you know, tough stuff. And I remember watching some of the scenes I wasn't in. Um, <laughs> one of my favorites was, excuse me, I'm battling this cough. <laughs> one of my favorite scenes, um, and I think it might have been maybe the Who's Zooming Who episode when Carol has, like, her first kiss. Yes. Yeah. Was that the one with Brad Pitt? It might have been, yeah. I know Brad Pitt was in an episode. Yeah, yeah. It well, might have, you know, we know her 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 love on that show was Bobby, but yes, yes, so it was Bobby, and then she was kind of like interested in this new sort of James yeah. Dean character, right? One of my greatest heartbreaks of all time is the footage of Brad and I walking down the hall at the very end of the episode. And we were supposed to be sort of like, you know, in your face, Carol, uh, he's with me now. So he had his arm around me and we would do it a couple of takes over and over again. And to this day, people will go, oh, you used to be on TV, you know, well, do you know anybody famous? And I'm like, well, there was a scene of Brad Pitt and I walking arm in arm down the school hallway, but the episode ran long and they had to cut it. So yeah. there's no proof, but I oh. know, I promise, <laughs> I promise. <laughs> but in that episode, I remember watching the, um, the director worked with uh, Joanna Kearns and Tracy, and it was a scene where they, she was, they were sitting in on Tracy's bed and uh, Tracy was talking about how she was kind of sick of being, you know, looked at like the, like the smart girl who's safe, who would never do anything wrong. And, and um, watching them work through that scene and they were kind of rolling around the bed and Joanna said, oh yeah, sometimes it's fun to, you know, kind of be, you know, mysterious or like mm, she might yeah. be trouble and they, there was this really great exchange between them and um i remember watching that thinking oh that's that's such a 
such a mother daughter moment um, that they're just they're just nailing. They just they just did a really great job on that. I was proud of them. Right. So let me ask you, Rachel. Um, this happens a lot with child actors. A lot of them decide when they become adults they want to go to college, which is totally understandable. And then they kind of realize that like that part of their life they want to put behind them. They want to be like you know. I don't want to say regular people because I consider actors regular people, but they wanted to be, you know, a mom, a dad. They wanted to be. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, was it your decision to do away with acting or did you just like, you know, did it gradually happen? Yeah, I, um, of course, it'll always be a part of me. And I, um, and I have since tried to, you know, do a little help my kids. You did something with goosebumps too. I know that. Yeah. Say again? You did something with like the goosebumps. Uh, I, maybe. I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, um, it got to a point where um, the parts that I was auditioning for were just getting a little uh, uncomfortable for me. You know, topics that I wouldn't feel comfortable discussing or, you know, showing up at church and seeing my, right. my bishop and saying, hi, <laughs> um, not really as family friendly as I used to be. So that transition was probably harder than even going from like child actor to teen. It was, it was a teen to adult. Um, like one of the girls who was, um, I want to say the girl who played Lydia maybe in the, the blue dress in the growing pains episode. Oh and yeah. She, yeah. She went on, I think. I had her on recently. That's, Did a, you? that's Kathy Podwell. She really? Played okay. the, she played the girl with the voice, the brick house. Yes. Yeah. Yes. She was on my show recently. Yep. Oh, that's so fun. Well, yeah. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember thinking that it was that kind of like age group that I was getting into where she went on to go do, did she do like Dallas? And was yeah, like, she, she yeah. Yeah. Uh, J.R. Ewan's second wife. Yeah. Right. So like, I'm not sure. I, I was kind of like, you know, that doesn't feel like something that um, I want to do. I remember auditioning for 30 something and um, I was, uh, they, the sides that they gave me to audition kind of said that I was like a baby. The description was like, I was, I'm like this teen girl. I was a babysitter who was just kind of like, you know, awakening to her sexuality. And I'm like, well, that might, mm, let's see. I did my best to kind of, you know, feel sexy. I don't know. Um, and I got the part. And then when they gave me the full script, I was like, oh no, oh no, 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 I can't. So I said no, and they were not happy. Um, let's put it that way. My agent was disappointed, but like she got it, she understood. Um, yeah. and so the parts just started to get more and more like that. And I was like, yeah, I think I got to do something else. So I, I, uh, I wanted to be more behind the camera at that point because I could maybe be in charge of what I was being a part of, um, like fully transparent and like able to help produce, um, things that I, you know, my, my, my little sister could watch and I wouldn't be embarrassed. Um, Right. So I thought I'll go to college and see how I do and major in, you know, theater or whatever. And, uh, and that didn't last long either. So, <laughs> but yeah, that, the whole thing of like, uh, is it Elizabeth Taylor? I remember hearing, I remember attributing a quote to her, something to the effect of like normalcy is like a fallacy. Like people in this business you know, who grow up in it think, Oh, well, if I, if I could just be normal, if I could just be like everybody else. And it's, it's, how do I put it? It's a, uh, you get out of it and then you love to do it. And so you just, you kind of spend the rest of your life wanting to be a part of that again, because it's, it's your craft, it's your yeah. talent, it's your identity in lots of ways. So yeah, I, um, I went on to, uh, yeah, I've done little things here and there, but honestly having a family, there's, I remember, um, we were doing a community, um, a community melodrama and they cast me as the lead and it was, you know, it was completely volunteer. No, no, no money, <laughs> nothing. It was just yeah. for fun. And my, my, my firstborn was, uh, with, um, she was almost one and I was up on the stage and I was looking down at the two uh, teenage girls that I had kind of hired to kind of like watch her while I'm doing my lines. And she took her first steps pretty much to them. And at that point I was like, mm -mm, no, that's, that's not, I'm not okay with that. And, but since then my, my teenagers are always like, mom, why don't you put me in modeling? Like, why don't you put me in, you know, and they do the school plays. I've been really proud of them. Um, all of them have had the chance to be leads in their school plays at some point. And I've helped coach them and stuff, but 
this is like my 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 role that is going to be the make the biggest longest term most important impact you know <laughs> ultimately so um i look at my mom and she you know she raised five of us and then remarried um and it has lots of responsibilities lots of hard uh children with disabilities and she was a, an amazing actress and and i'm not sorry that she put her stuff on hold to help us yeah. so now i kind of feel like maybe maybe as i get older maybe stuff you know will happen and i'll be able to um help my community or you know my sphere of influence with some talent but but it's obviously you know motherhood and and my family is gotta be number one i remember um shirley jones saying in an interview that her number one you know most important role ever was was her children and being a mother so i really value that and i uh, and i'm glad i'm glad but sometimes you do feel a little like oh i want to be a part of that my my brothers are uh still involved in the business and um they are doing yo gabba gabba and doing a bunch of fun things and they're and i and i'm like hey guys can i hey can i you know they let me do a voiceover once yeah. a couple years ago and uh, so that's kind of fun they have they're definitely still in the business and i just like to dip my toe in every once in a while but right and correct me if i'm wrong but don't, for many years now aren't you a licensed massage therapist as well yeah I, so, yeah i mean and that's not an easy job i mean you know a lot of ways you're trying to like you know people go through bad backs they go through all this stuff so like you know it's it's also got to be like something that you know you feel productive every day because you're trying to help somebody you know ease pain that they're having and things like that yeah no 100 percent. i uh when my husband and i got married i was in uh in massage therapy school and the idea was for me to have a, a skill and a trade that i could uh fall back on and and do from home as raising my children as like a you know a an acting gig wouldn't allow me um so I did that for a long time. Uh, it physically takes a toll. Um, and then the laws here in Colorado changed. So uh, I'm, I'm not doing that now. But since then, I've done, uh, I've done uh, teaching assisting in special ed classrooms um, with the, uh, the uh, just down at our local school for a couple of years. And that's been huge because uh, uh, it's those kids that are so hard and the families that, you know, that are so grateful to have you and we, I can use my little funny dramatic play, you know, things every once in a while. Okay, here we do. Let's do math or I'm kind of a clown, kind of a clown. Um, and that's been a, a huge blessing uh, for me to be able to uh, help these families and get to know them. They're amazing. So I've been, I've been really lucky. Right. So Rachel, before we go, I mean, it, it's hard to pick one thing, but what are you most proud of in your career? If you had to pick one thing? Um, the first thing that pops into my mind, um, and it may sound silly, but I think the best compliment I ever received was probably when I did a, an uncredited voice for my brother's show for Yo Gabba Gabba. Um, I was Mother Fox, and I was like, come on, children, it's time to go take a bath. We just did some voiceover, and uh, I had heard that he had he had said to somebody else, who did we get to do that? Because that sounds way too professional <laughs> for us. And uh, so I'll, I'll just say that. I'll just say getting my brother's compliment really meant the world to me. Right. And he didn't um, know you. That's pretty. Uh, yeah. No. I mean, well, I Rachel, love him. Rachel, this was a lot of fun. I really ha had a blast. Um, it was a real honor to interview you. And, you know, I grew up on the 80s and the early 90s, and this was part of my childhood. So thank yeah. you for giving myself and so many fans so many great memories. Like I said, that Different Strokes episode always <laughs> turns out, Growing Pains, the Family Ties. You know, um, you just should be very proud because, you know, um, you were around at a time when TV was really taken off, and you had a big hand in that. So congratulations on that, and thank, thank you again you. for me some time. Thank you, Mike, for this opportunity to, to walk down memory lane with you. This has just really been lovely. And I, I still want to get my mom to like write some of this stuff down because it'd be such a fun read, even for my own, even if just for my own kids someday or grandkids. Thank you, Mike. You're amazing. Really so glad you reached out to me. Well, thank you again. I appreciate it. And folks, there you have it. You know, 
Rachel's career is one that she should always be proud of. And as fans, we got to see so many great moments. If you ever were a fan of Different Strokes, I've said this for many years, that two-part episode she did as Alice was as important to that series as any episode they ever did. She shined in that episode and just think so many better things were yet to come. What she did in Growing Pains, I mean, we'll always remember Shelly. She's a credit to the business, a credit to her parents, and a credit to her family. For In the Spotlight, I'm Mike Kenichi saying good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you.